Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Crime Center podcast. Today, we will be discussing the murder and kidnapping of Ying Ying Zhang. This is one of the most chilling cases that I have ever covered. Please be advised that this podcast is purely our opinion that is based on facts from the cases. It does not reflect any opinion of any of our sponsors. You are entitled to your own views. If you have a different viewpoint, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to start a true crime conversation. Hello, everyone. I am Carter Covington. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Brazil Coglin. Thank you so much for being with us, Anna, today. And we're going to get into really a stunning case. So this, as I said before, is the murder of Ying Ying Zhang, who is a college student out of Urbana University. And we are going to get right into the murder. The kidnapping and murder of Ying Ying Zhang occurred in Urbana on June 9th, 2017, when Zhang, a visiting Chinese scholar at the University of Urbana, Champagne, was abducted by Brent Allen Christensen, a Champagne resident and former physics graduate student at the, at the college. Christensen lured Zhang into his car at a bus stop on campus with the promise of a ride after she missed a bus, and then took her to his apartment where he raped and murdered her while his wife was out of town for the weekend. On June 30th, 2017, the FBI arrested and charged Christensen in federal court. Christensen was convicted of one count of kidnapping, resulting in death, and two counts of making false statements to two agents of the FBI, for which he received a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on July 18th, 2019. So I think that this case is truly stunning. I mean, you have a college student who is studying abroad. Her name is Ying Ying Zhang. She's from a small village in China. And it's really stunning that these these things happened at such a small town college. Yes, it is. It's, it's every parent's absolute worst nightmare. Exactly. And you, never, you never think it's going to happen to your own child, especially since she, was, she went to a different country. And, you know, they had all these hopes and dreams for her. And it, it turned into this, this, for lack of a better word for it, this nightmare for this family. And it's still a nightmare because, because that we will see later things have not, you know, they, they, yeah. there's still a lot of unanswered questions. So Ying Ying was born on December 21st, 1990 in the city of Nanping in China. She had one younger brother and she played in a very successful Chinese band and had ambitions of becoming a professor in China. And just a note that she graduated top in her class in the best university in China, um, which is truly stunning that she could do that. She was very talented, very bright. Uh, so in 2016, she graduated from that college and decided that she was going to be a visiting scholar in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. She then made her way to Urbana in the U.S., in April 2017 to conduct research on photosynthesis and crop productivity for one year in the lab on campus. So she was extremely bright, extremely talented, and she was also musical. She, she had a gift and she really, really um, took advantage of that gift and started her own band. Yes, but uh, everyone, everyone who knew her liked her and said that she was she was very helpful she was very nice she was beautiful and she was some people considered her to be brilliant yeah and she was poised to go on to do great things um she was also planning to marry her boyfriend her her love of her life in october 2017 so she was actually working at the lab in the u.s on the urbana campus to save up money for her own wedding, which is a stunning piece of, of knowledge in this case that really goes to show you how 
she was just like you and me. She was just trying to put food on the table. She was just trying to start her own life and she was trying to make it. Yeah, she was a very hard worker. And uh, the people were just stunned that this would happen to someone that they had so much, that they had so much promise. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, people consider her the Michael Jordan of academics. That's coming from one of her teachers at the University of Urbana. And she was, she was something else. Um, however, this, this story of a, of a Chinese scholar that was studying abroad in the United States um, really took a turn in June of 2017. It was the afternoon of June 20, June 9th, 2017, and Zhang was traveling on a Champaign-Urbana mass transit district bus in Urbana to an off-campus apartment complex where she was planning to sign a new apartment lease. She was running late and sent a text message to the leasing agent at approximately 1.39 p.m. To, to inform them that she would arrive at 2.10 p.m. After riding on the bus, she exited at 1.52 p.m. and tried to transfer to another bus. However, she was on the wrong side of the street, and that would prove deadly for her. She missed her bus, and she was stopped at a bus stop waiting for the next one. She then, at 2 p.m., cameras see a black Saturn Astra pass her uh, and then make a loop and circle back at 2.03 p.m. The Saturn Astra had one driver, a sole driver. She spoke to the driver for approximately one minute and then entered the car. The leasing agent sent a text message to her at approximately 2.38 p.m., but she received no reply. As the hours passed, Zhang's friends, aware of her errand and expecting her to return quickly, grew increasingly worried. At 9.24 p.m., an associate professor called police to report her disappearance. Yes, it's also important to, uh, to acknowledge that this, there was a student at the school, Emily Hogan, who posted on Facebook about a man who stopped her, who was riding in his car, and he stopped her and, told her and asked her if she wanted to come into his car. I think that he, he was, was posing a, as a policeman, too. Yes, exactly. He, was, uh, he showed her his, his, what is obviously a fake badge and said, listen, do you want to come in my car? And he was wearing avi aviator sunglasses. And she posted on f Facebook at 9.15 in the morning, listen, watch out for this guy. He's trying, to, he's trying to get girls to get into his car. He is up to no good, be aware. This was at 9.15 in the morning. If she had seen this post on Facebook, maybe this would have saved her life. Because at 1.15, at 1.30, she meets this guy that uh, Emily Hogan is talking about. Yes, and it's truly stunning how the power of social media has really become prominent in, in our society in the last 20 years where people can save lives on social media and with one social media post, if, if Emily Hogan hadn't posted that, maybe more women would have been murdered. But to Ying Ying's um, story, she obviously did not see that social media post and um, was, was tricked by this awful man. And I would just like to note that after they reported her missing, um, very intense search efforts started with the family of Ying Ying coming to the United States. That, was, that would be her brother, her fiance, and her two parents. The reward intensified as time went on, and really, they really did not know where she was. They entered her apartment, that is police, and they found everything in order. They found nothing out of the ordinary. They looked at surveillance camera after surveillance camera and did not see anything of Ying Ying, um, and it was really, really um, bad for the police to not find anything. They were they were facing very much um, pressure, and that is when the FBI got involved in this case. I think it was on day 17 where the pressure really started 
to be put on this police force. Yes, I think, in my opinion, I think she got in that car because she thought that this man was a policeman. Uh, as, and she thought that she was safe and it would, it would be fine. Little did she know that she would be walking into that car. She would be walking into her death. Yeah, it's, that's a phenomenal point there. That is such a tough, tough thing to say. It's, it's just brutal how, how she went. And it's brutal how this man tricked her into thinking that she was safe with him and thinking that this was a cop who was going to take her to her, to her um, lease, lease uh, thing. It, it's really sad and very depressing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think anyone would probably would have gotten into that car because yeah. he did have the fake badge and he looked, he probably looked just like a cop and she figured, you know what, nothing's going to happen to me. Yeah. And then after those 17 days, the FBI did get involved and they found the security camera video of Ying Ying on the two buses as well as a security camera video from the bus stop in which she was. And they saw that, that car circle back and they saw Ying Ying get into that car and they knew that, that, that the person who murdered Ying Ying or caused her disappearance was in that car. They were able to discern that it was an 18, that, sorry, that, there were 18 four-door Saturn Astras registered to owners in the Champaign County area. One of these vehicles was registered to Brent Allen Christensen, a Champaign resident. So they ended up talking to those 18 people that owned this certain car. They ended up talking to them. They brought them, they brought them in. And one really caught their eye, and that was Christensen. They interviewed him for the first time on June 12, 2017, and inspected his car. When questioned, Christensen reportedly claimed that he did not remember what he was doing at the time of Zhang's disappearance. He later told the police that he may have been sleeping or at home playing video games. So really, the, the lack of alibi for Christensen is really um, making these, these officers think could he have done this crime? Yeah, they, they found his car. They knew what the car looked like because they have over a thousand cameras around that campus and in the, in the, in the city. So th that's how they were able to match the car. Yeah. And then after that, um, they were really stuck. They had no evidence on Christensen. They did not have a body. Ying Ying was still missing. Um, people were in grief. People were in sadness. There were, there was a sense of really, um, sadness and a sense of feeling scared on the campus at Urbana Champaign. And on June 14th, police officer reviewed the surveillance video footage. And it was actually a rookie campus police officer that looked at this footage for hours on end and observed that the car sunroof was similar to the one on Christensen's car. They also noted that the car in the video had a cracked hubcap and upon reinspecting Christensen's car found that it had a cracked, a cracked hubcap. They concluded that the car in the footage belonged to Christensen. They knew if you found the car, you would find the person who killed Ying Ying. And that was their Hail Mary, and they caught that Hail Mary right in the end zone. And, I mean, now they have probable cause to really take this guy in and put him under some pressure and hold him in, in a police jail. But the, this case is so crazy already, but it only gets crazier from here on out. It gets crazier with girlfriends it gets crazier with confessions and it gets crazier with all of the above and this case is just a whole bunch of crazy so i would like to thank you for coming to part one of the murder of ying ying zhang a conversation with carter covington and anna brazil coglin please tune in for part two that will be up soon 
and you could check that out. There will be a bell popping up for part two. And thank you for watching, and please come back next time. Thank you.